All right, guys, today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that's actually pretty, uh, pretty current and pretty much a trending thing right now, and that is the issue of uh, permits and new laws, and a lot of things are changing right now. Turtles are one of the most endangered vertebrates on the planet, and because of that, there's going to be a lot of new laws coming up in the next five to ten years. Uh, FWC has just announced that they're going to be coming up with some new laws concerning aquatic turtles. Uh, I know in particular diamondback terrapins were one of the ones that people were really concerned about. So with that in mind, I wanted to talk to you about, you know, what it's like to have a permit. What is the process to get a permit and who needs one? So first let's get into um, me personally, I do have a permit. Mine is a wildlife exhibition license done through the state of Georgia. It's basically an education permit and basically I'm allowed to have native species and protected species in return that I do education work. I have to have a certain amount of hours per year. Um, I do have to take my animals around. Uh, they do uh, ask me to kind of create an outline and present to them when I applied for the permit. Uh, what is what is my education program? What is my outline? What do I want people to walk away with uh, after I present to them? And that is kind of the general point to an education permit is that you're giving the audience something that they're going to actually learn from um, and that's really the point you know you really want people to not only enjoy seeing the animals which is always cool but you want them to walk away uh, hopefully with a better understanding um, now getting a permit is not too difficult uh, depending on where you live i know this video is primarily based towards everybody in the u.s i know i do have some viewers from other countries um, i know in your country you may have uh, permits you may not um, but here in the US uh, it's pretty easy you just contact your local state department and just ask a few questions you know be friendly be, be respectful let them know that you know you have some animals you want to work with uh, what is the process to do it and to do it legally you know what do they need from you and then what can you do for them um, it's a two-way street you know being an educator it's really good because uh, when people call and have questions about reptiles or turtles, um, a lot of times they don't have the answers, but they can refer them to me. So everybody helps each other. It's a really good deal. Now, so with that in mind, um, most states do not offer pet permits. Uh, that may be a thing in some states, but I really don't know too many people that are just offering a permit where you can just have something as a pet. So you really need to, um, are you going to be able to offer education? Are you going to be able to are you doing your permit more in terms of breeding and selling? Because I know some people do that lane. You know, a lot of people like to breed and sell things, but you may need a permit to do so. So who needs a permit? Um, if you're just a private keeper and you've got an aquarium and you've got, you know, two red-eared sliders in there, you probably don't need a permit. Um, if you do have a species that's protected or probably regulated in your state, you may want to inquire about a permit. If you have a species that you don't work with, but you want to, but you know they're protected, or you know there may be some issues with some laws, just make a phone call, make an email, and find out. Um, as time goes on, and as uh, laws get written, only more laws are gonna get written, especially um, concerning reptiles. You know, part of the being in the reptile community is, you know, we're definitely subject to new laws and discrimination sometimes. So uh, the better thing to do is just to be on the safe side. Uh, you know, in a few years, we may have to have permits just to have sulcata tortoises. You know, they may start to look at them the way they look at Burmese pythons and tegus, uh, especially with the way that they escape. So um, it's, it'll, it'll, it's just a good idea to look into it, to be educated about it. So I, I don't necessarily think everyone needs to have a permit, but I do think that everyone should at least know the process in their own state. So part of the process for getting a permit is first you got to decide, are you eligible? Are you willing to make the effort to be an educator? Are you willing to make the effort to uh, have your animals be registered and let the state know what you have? Uh, second, you have to submit to an inspection. Uh, inspections are important. It's their way of seeing, um, do you know what you're doing? Or are you just cramming a bunch of stuff into aquariums in your mom's basement? Um, if that's the case, you're probably not going to get a permit, dude. Uh, so what you really want to do is make sure that you're keeping things in a way that uh, fits within their guidelines. Most states have guidelines. My state has theirs as well. And uh, once you follow along that, you should be good to go. Dude, how did you get that feather right there? You have a feather in your face. Let me, let me get it. Let me get it. How did you get a feather right there? 
I swear, this tortoise manages to do things I... Ooh, that was weird. How was it in there? And they can feel this. That's the nice thing is they can feel through their shell. Uh, with the amount of sulcata tortoises that get loose and end up walking down the side of the road somewhere, uh, there may come a time when the states look at them the same way they look at Burmese pythons and tegus, and you may end up finding yourself having to get a permit to retain your sulcata tortoise. Not saying it's going to happen now, not saying it's going to happen soon, but uh, the way the laws are written, it could happen. So I hope this video was helpful. This is just a little short video, but I did want to touch on it because it is a subject that I think is going to be more important, uh, especially as time goes by. So I hope you guys are good. Stay legal, stay safe. 